Today we're going to talk about mastering your trading process and the 12 candle rule. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Today, traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Friday, hopefully everybody's had a good trading week. I have received a ton of emails, a lot of questions, and I appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, I, I'm just trying to get through in between answering questions and emails and obviously three kids and a house and family and everything else. So thank you for your patience and thank you for the feedback, the likes, the questions. This is a journey uh, that we're both on together. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did the day before. The market's going to throw us some more curveballs today. But what our goal is, is to master our trading process and create certainty in an uncertain environment. That's what you need to understand. Today we're going to really nail in on some specific details. I'm getting a lot of questions about the, the timings, the stop hunts, and, and just, just before I forget, I'll repeat, it's 15 minute charts, 8 to 11 p.m., 2 to 5 a.m., and 8 to 11 a.m., New York Eastern Standard Time. I challenge anybody to send me a screenshot of one of these six pairs where the market has not moved in this 12 candle window. Now just to clarify, 50 pips a day, it doesn't mean that every one of those pairs is going to move 50 pips. There will be a stop hunt. There will be a trade. You may be in a trading range that's 30 pips. That's what we're going to talk about today is trying to identify the highest possible trade setups, the, the highest probability trade setups that give us the best risk to reward and understanding the timings how important the timings are and how that works because a lot of people keep asking me what are you thinking when you go to the charts and today that's what we're going to talk about okay I have one objective and that's to buy low or sell high that's it I want to cut my losses and I want to take profits I want to I want to try and maximize the most out of a potential winning trade I will be using the clock in my head constantly in that 12 candle window Either if I'm in a trade outside of that 12 candle window, if we get a trade at the end of the 12 candle window and I'm in a trade, I'll be thinking time decay if my trade is moving towards a profit target in that next three hour window. We've talked about the three hour windows. If I haven't hit my 50 pips or it's, it's hit stops and it's consolidating and it's only gone 40 pips and we're heading into the next uh, early part of the US market, I'm gonna, I'll probably take, take the profits unless it's a very strongly trending market but in most cases if that if that's happening you'll already have your 50 pips we're just going to review some basic concepts we talk about structure the highs and the lows geometrical patterns and again we'll review some screenshots today understand that when we put those parameters before the market opens we draw our highs and lows we, we mark off where the money is we want to know where the stop losses are but we don't know which way they're going to break. We can only make judgments based on what price action does. And today I'm going to clarify this again a bit more to understand the importance of the stop hunt, the first hour. Understanding when we talk about what are you thinking? What are you thinking? If you have your highs and lows marked off, okay, there's nothing to do until they break to one side. In that first hour, there are three options. Nothing happens, they break out, or they do a stop hunt. And a stop hunt typically will be hitting the highs or hitting the lows. It doesn't have to be a breakout. What's important about this situation is in that first hour, that's four candles, we need the stops to get hit. Now, if they break out, now we know we wait. If you're not in the breakout, if you're not already in the market, we wait. We don't know if that breakout is going to continue or if it is a false break that's a 25 pip stop hunt. We wait. If the market hits the highs and pulls back at the beginning of the next hour, again, we want to ask ourselves, is this 
the trap or the trade. If nothing happens in that first hour, if they don't hit the stops in the first hour, guess what's probably going to happen at the open of the market? Most likely, if there's not a stop hunt in that first hour, the stop hunt will occur at the open of the market. Now I want you to think in terms of using your, your logic, if they're taking traders into a, on a one, two, three, or a one, two, three, four, you know, one, two, sideways, three, four, think about what they're doing. They're taking traders at the open of the market into the high or low. In most cases, that is a trap unless the market is already trending and breaking to new highs or breaking to new lows and continuing and extending that range. Very important. If they do that, if they extend the range out, then our possibility is that the range may give us the trade then in that third hour. But if they're taking traders into the stop hunt at the open of the market, start thinking. We talked about the hour phenomena. If the hour phenomena is when the markets move at the beginning or end of an hour, if they issue a stop hunt in that first hour or in that second hour, or they take you break out in the first hour, one, two, three, four, and they come back in the second hour, one, two, three, four, guess which hour the trade is going to move in? Third hour. We're going to look at a specific example yesterday on the pound New Zealand of a fantastic setup, asymmetrical risk reward, timings, 12 candle rule, again, the three things that markets do. When you have your plan going into the market for a pair, even if you're just following one or two pairs, are we inside of yesterday's range? Have they given us a high and a low? Have they dragged us up high and gone sideways? Have they dragged us down low and gone sideways? Mark off your highs and lows and remember, remember, think about yourself if you were already in the market, where would your stop loss be? If you took a trade and you were already in the market and up pips, where would your stop loss be? Because that is money and the market does what it can to ensure that most people get disappointed by hitting their stops by, take, by, by margining their stops, if they're extending ranges out, if it's a straightaway trade or something like that. But again, think time. time. Timings are the most important thing. And think that hour rotation. Because if the market is taking three hours to set up, if they break out, now you're thinking, we're gonna, get a, we're gonna have a new high and a new low. That's my trading range. So they've extended the range and if that's the case, you want to be selling high or buying low. Now, if it's a stop hunt, the market will pull back inside of the range. And whatever hour that is, if it's a stop hunt, again, if nothing's happened in that first hour or they've done a stop hunt in the first hour and the second hour pulls back or does a stop hunt in the other direction and pulls back, start thinking third hour. But if we get a breakout in the first hour and we get a pullback in the second hour, again, guess when that market's going to move? It's very simple. Breakout, pullback, continuation for a trend. Breakout, pullback, false break, reversal. And again, that comes back to what's set up in terms of our structure, where the stop hunt has occurred, and the pattern of how they present this if, they, if, London, if there's been a stop hunt and London opens up and engulfs or reverses a market, if they take off and go straight down one, two, three, four in four candles, that's a stop hunt. If they consolidate it at the stop hunt, that is where we want to position ourselves in the market for the move down. If you miss the stop hunt trade, that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a move back up or down in that third hour. If the market pulls away right away and goes one, two, three, four, and then opens up at the extreme in the next hour, inside of a trading range, inside of a bigger trading range, so you might have had a high and low in Asia, but you might have a high and low from the previous day. If that market consolidates after taking out stops, 
that initial burst in London is a stop hunt. So if they go into consolidation for two, four, six candles, now again you're thinking, am I, wh what do I need to see for a trade to come to fruition here? Is it an engulfment? Is it a pin hammer? Is there pins on either side? Just because the market takes off without you does not mean that you've missed the trade. There's a bigger box possibly setting up. Sometimes the market may move 50 pips and go into consolidation. It's moved away quickly. You haven't seen that trade. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to come back as we saw again yesterday on a couple of the pairs. There's, there's at least three or four trades in the day. Now again, this comes back to your process and how you're viewing the market. Now we'll talk about this. When I'm on the screen and I'm on that 12 candle window, there is nothing else going on for me. That is it. I'm looking at the six pairs. I have little alerts set on a couple of them, but I'm looking for some very specific setups. So I don't have my phone on, I don't have you know music playing or Facebook or any of that stuff. I am focused on the screen and I want to make sure that when this market sets up for me and I see that setup there that I can position myself in and know because I've seen them enough times that if this trade is right it's going to take off right away. If it hesitates and hangs around then I'm going to get really specific and focused and make a decision if I need to cut that if I'm trapped or if I need to hold on to it because now they're going to go sideways for one or two candles before they shift the market. So again these are all little things that you have to get in your process. You have to get it down in your process. But let's just talk about this. In this first hour, if we don't see a burst to the high or to the low, and we talked about this, we talked about three bursts, now they might go sideways and then, and then do another one. But I want you to start thinking about timings, timings, timings. If the market opens in that second hour, this is the most important thing. If nothing's happened in that first hour, start thinking second hour. And in the majority of cases, if the second hour is when they burst to the high or to the low, that is the trap. Whenever you see the three strong bursts over the course of an hour, and it's momentum and pulsing and big bursts, and we're hitting stops, we're hitting the highs or the lows, but it's not going much further, and we're heading into that next hour, start thinking, what do I need to see for this market to give me price confirmation to enter into a position and most likely again if it's at numbers. So I need I need an engulfment. I need a pin hammer. I need start screenshotting these and looking at the price patterns that are there. But more importantly start thinking about the rotation that you're in inside of that hour. If it's the first candle, have they already done hit the stops? Have they gone sideways for one or two candles? Have they had an engulfment? Is there a pin hammer? Once you're in the trade, what do you need to see for it to con confirm your thesis? So if it pulls away and it's fast and aggressive, think about what's happened there. They have traders trapped. People see that candle, maybe it's a larger candle, a 20, 20 pip candle, but they've trapped traders. If it's at the beginning of an hour and they've made a shift, chances are it's going to take off, especially if it's after a stop hunt. And the reason why that is, is that because they have traders trapped who have gotten in down low or gotten in up high and they're in the wrong direction. And if they go back, they allow them to get out of a losing position. So again, start, stop being confused by the candle action and start paying attention to the clock because we can go through every single day this week in that 12 candle window and we see where the market opens and there's a shift. Now again, it doesn't mean they're all perfect trade setups, but there's been a perfect trade setup every single day on at least one of these pairs in every session. So again, just start paying attention and thinking timings and then start looking at the big picture. Where's the money? Where are the stops at? Where are the highs and lows? Is there, is there, is there any geometry? Is there, a, is there higher lows for an ascending triangle? Is there a descending triangle? 
you know, for a breakout down low? Is there a head and shoulders? Is we looked at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays? Is there bigger rectangles? Have they come back inside of the previous day's range? Start thinking boxes. Mark off where the money is, and and remember, put yourself and look at some of the profitable trades and start thinking about that as the market opens up. Are you losing ground if you were in a profitable trade? Do you see the market coming back for you? Because they're gonna go back and hit the stops. So in this 12 candle window, if, there is a, if there's a stop hunt, okay, we get a breakout from a low, the market breaks out at the end of the hour, London might come back, Oops, we'll put it in this next. London might come back and they might go one, two, three back into where the breakout occurred. But now we've got a breakout pullback. But if London starts working the low, one, two, three, four, chances are we're going to maybe get an engulfment in the third hour. And again, if we don't get it, if it's, if it's not set up right, don't sit there looking at one pair going, <clears throat> well, they hit the stops and I'm at the third hour, but I don't see a trade set up. If it's not there, look at one of the other pairs. That's the whole point of following six pairs because you get tuned into their behavior very specifically. You, you can develop a very fine-tuned focus on those levels and again, when the market does a stop hunt and they have bursts and we're at the session highs or lows and they've hit the stops and they pull back in, again, as we've seen every single session, there's going to be a move. But remember what they're trying to do. You know, 12 candles sounds really simple. That's three hours. But again, break it down into three blocks. I should see a stop hunt. Okay, what happened? This is my thinking process. Nothing's happened yet. Okay, or they did a stop hunt, or they had a breakout. One of those three things. Okay, if we had a breakout, now is it breakout pullback, or is it a stop hunt? What does London do when it opens up? Does it take traders further away? So it's in the, now we have a breakout. So what do I need to see to get into that trade if it's gonna continue as a trend trade? Or are they extending it out as a stop hunt? Again, wait for the market to go into consolidation. Okay, and that can be a two bar, three bar, four bar consolidation. But if it's a 50 pip stop hunt and they go into a two bar consolidation, just look to your left. Have they cleared out stops from a previous day, from, from a previous session, whatever that may be. Have those levels marked off. And remember, they're going after profitable trades. That's where the money is. There's stop losses sitting there. Breakout orders, profit taking, uh, uh, pending orders, again, stop loss orders, right? So they're going to get the money. But start thinking time-wise, what's happening? And you know what? Some days you may be in a range-bound market where they're just jamming people in on both sides. Maybe it's a, a payrolls day. Maybe it's Bank of England. Maybe, maybe there's some other news release coming out, out that session. But again, There'll be one or two of the pairs usually that sets up really well. And if you, you get a trading range on one particular day and, and it hits the high or the low and it's 35 pips and it consolidates, it's 35 pips. But most likely, now that they've extended the range, in the next session, there's going to be a 50 pip stop hunt. Because they'll take out the high, they'll take out the low. And if it's 35 pips in, in London, it's probably going to be 50 plus in the US session. Start thinking about highs and lows, okay? First hour, what happened? Nothing, a breakout, a stop hunt. Okay, second hour, is this a trap or a trade? London's gonna move, they're gonna move, but are they trapping you in the wrong direction and then gonna move it at the end of that hour, in the beginning of the next hour? Start thinking like that. Rotation, the hourly rotation, are they jamming me in the wrong direction or have they broken out now and they're extending the range and it's trending? Little things, but start thinking about the clock. If the market takes off without you, and it's moving, and it's moved 50 plus pips, and in the third hour, it's still trending, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna either have three pushes and jam traders in to reverse in the US session, or they're gonna come back prior to the US open and 
stop hunt back against the trend for a continuation of that move in the US session. As we showed the other day, one, two, three. Those patterns are everywhere, especially in a strongly trending market. So again, screen, print off some of your charts, screenshot what you expect to see. What should it look like? What's an entry look like? If you're not sure, look at the highs and lows because that's where they've happened at. So again, keep it simple. Time decay, the hour phenomena, how far were the highs and lows apart when you started the trading session. So if you have a low of the day and a high of the day for your Asian session or from the previous day's high and low, how far apart are they? So if you're chasing a trade, it's a 40 pip range and you get filled 20 pips into the range, you might be trapped, okay? Start thinking of some simple things. Identify where the big picture money is. Know timing wise if London has been the trap or the trade. Where is the money? Okay, stop hunt at the high and the low. One, two, three, engulfments, pin hammers at the time with these 12 candle windows. I hope that makes sense. We're going to look at some examples today. Again, I appreciate all the feedback in the comments, but keep it simple. Follow the money, stop hunts, timings, round numbers, engulfments, and pin hammers. Have a great trading session. Keep getting better. Master your trading process. Create certainty with your process in an uncertain environment. And may the markets go. Today, traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, continuing our discussion on mastering your trading process and the 12 candle window, creating certainty in an uncertain environment. And just reiterating that you're going to have the market throw you different setups every single day but if you can have a duplicatable simple process in that 12 candle window we want to mark off our highs and our lows i talked about that first hour looking for the stop hunt a breakout or nothing and in your mind not being chasing the candle action but stepping back and thinking where the money is where the stops are the big picture and identifying the logic behind what's happening so that first hour if there's nothing happening no burst out no you know breakout or stop hunt or anything then you're thinking you've got to be thinking second hour so london opens up candle number five which is our fifth candle breaks out of the trading range the market came down in asia and consolidated this is a golden type of situation you'll see this a lot when the market moves 50 pips and then goes into consolidation you know you're going to get a breakout or a stop hunt or something out of that consolidation the market breaks out comes back inside on the next candle the second candle of the london hour breakout pullback traders again this is a possible entry but we have a, a market that's falling this is monday morning we opened up inside of friday's uh, trading range underneath of the u.s session the market auctioned down after one push two push three pushes it auctioned down 50 pips, went into consolidation, got traders chasing it lower, chasing it, thinking they're going to miss out on the runaway, the trap. They tra this Again, tra first hour, nothing happened. Then the second hour, you're thinking, is London going to be the trade or the trap? Traders take this trade, chasing the move. It comes back with an inside bar. The market goes right back and hits the stops at the redrawn high of the day at the top of the consolidation and one push two pushes three pushes and then bursts back inside of the consolidation so this is a failed long trade if traders didn't take anything off at the high of the day we had we had a little micro double top pattern and the markets come back inside again a shift candle again traders see a big candle they don't want to chase this they think that's too big of a stop when you have a shift candle they are not going back up here so even if you use a normal 20 25 pip stop on this this is the british pound new zealand they have locked in this volume if this is now going to remain the high for this session they will not go back up there because if they do they allow losing traders they've trapped this money now if they if they go back up here, they allow losing traders to get out of this trade with a break even or even a small profit. Now, again, 
we have stops now underneath of the London session. But just coming back to our 12 candle window, first hour, nothing. Second hour, trap. The second candle gave us a trade that went about 40 pips. Okay, so again, went into consolidation. If it hasn't hit your 50 pip target after this three hours, cut the trade and take take what's there. You're at the high of the day. You should already be at break even once it breaks new highs or new lows. The market bursts back inside as we head into the US, uh, prior to the US 12 candle window. The first candle of that window takes out the stops from the London candle. The second candle engulfs it. Now traders would have taken that as an entry, but again, we're in the pre-market. We're in the pre-market. The only time that I will take a trade in that pre-market is if it's on the third third leg on an extended range. So we've had three pushes and a one, two, three. That is the only time. I will wait for the market to go to open. So we get to we have an inside bar at the end of that hour and again the hourly rotation. The first candle of the next hour we have a a, a bear pin hammer, so a lower low, lower high after the inside bar. So inside bar traders are in the market. This is the logic you have to be thinking. Now, if you think that's going to fail, the next candle should take out these highs and come back inside of the range. The second candle makes a new lower high and lower low, hitting the stops of traders who chased the engulfment in the pre-market, and then bang, a shift candle takes traders uh, short, and again, consolidates before dropping down another 25 consolidating and dropping down another 25 but most importantly first hour breakout stop hunt or nothing second hour trap or trade in this case it was the trade in this case it was the trap but obviously it gave a trade in that second candle but the first candle was the stop hunt we had breakout pullback inside bar we go to our next day and we're on Tuesday. So again, we start with structure. Okay, as the as the market's opening up, we we have the Asian range, goes into consolidation, it's dropped 50 pips and gone into consolidation, breaks the lows prior to the Europe London uh, box starting. We have a one bar pullback and a pin hammer at the Europe open. Traders may have positioned themselves for a continuation of that breakout. What well, we get the one, two, three. So now we ask ourselves, is this a breakout or a stop hunt? Well, clearly it's a breakout because we've already hit all the stops. If we were doing a stop hunt, the stop hunt would have been back to the high of the day. This is a breakout, one, two, three, out of the box. We're outside of the Asian range. And then London opens and goes one, two, back inside pinning the breakout trade hasn't gone back inside of the range it's gone back inside of the stop hunt it's stop hunted the pin hammer drops down again and pulls back so now we have consolidation after the breakout breakout pullback consolidation now traders may have shorted this at the numbers they may have not done anything at all this is not what i would consider to be um, the type of setup to position myself with a continuation but if traders had positioned themselves or got in short at the beginning of the next hour on the break of the inside bar they have a one bar stop the market proceeds to take out the stops drops down they would be at break even either taking profit or just holding on to the trade so it comes back one two three there's our stop hunt in the next window stop hunting traders who have shorted that market so this is a, a low probability setup if this was going to be a great trade it would have continued through so once it went into consolidation traders would want to consider either closing the trade being at break even or taking something off the table again i'm just showing the thinking process and the hourly phenomena we had a breakout pullback we're looking for the continuation the next session in the u.s session we have a downward moving market, one push, two push, three pushes, consolidation. First hour, they pin the lows. Second hour, we get a one, two, three, pin hammer, back with the trend. They've hit the stops on the downside. And then London, or sorry, New York has opened and gone one, two, three, pin the stops on top, pin hammer, 
we re-enter the trade, either at a break of the candle, at numbers, you know, one bar stop, it doesn't matter. We're looking for the, the measured move continuation. This market drops down, takes out the lows, goes into consolidation. Again, it's moved 25 pips and gone into consolidation. You either want to be cutting this trade, taking profits off, or going to break even. So again, I'm just, I'm not trying to show you just perfect trade setups. I'm showing the, the rationale when you're in the thinking process of an existing trade setup. If you were to take this trade, now I'm not saying these are ideal setups. I'm talking about just taking this one pair and using the 12 candle window. So again, traders who were short up at the Europe Open, they got their 50 pips. Traders who shorted this market in the US session on the follow through, moved 25, they either took something off the table, they got stopped out of break even, or they held onto it with no stop and got stopped out with a loss, or they, uh, uh, just took money off the table at 25 pips. We go into the next day. We have a, again, we have a market that's pulled back and then dropped down in the Asian session. And we mark our highs and lows off. We go into our 12 candle window. We have our high drawn. The market's uh, done a one, two, three, consolidated and then dropped down. And in the Europe open, again, we have a one, two, sideways, three at the London Open. Hitting the stops on the downside. So the London Open candle, we have a, in that first hour, we were at the redrawn high. They've come back inside. The London candle has pinned the lows and done an inside bar. Traders may have taken this trade long because they it's hit the stops, they've hit the stops. This is going back through the high. But this trade goes one, two, three. Again, you're at the high of the day. You either go to break even. You might take something off the table. I, I, I wouldn't. I'd be at break even after. When you see a one, two, three, and we're heading into the end of the hour, you need to be at break even, taking something off the table, or um, positioning yourself and looking for a possible reversal in the other direction. And and there's our classic shift candle at the open of the next, the third hour, in our twelve candle window. Traders don't want to chase this trade. They think that they're chasing it. What this is, is is a shift candle. Okay, they've come down one, two, three, and gone up one, two, three, and then bang. With the original direction of our trend, we're in a downtrend from the previous day. We have the market has dropped down 100 pips in Asia and gone into consolidation. We're looking to sell high. We have a shift candle. It's a one bar stop. And again, as you'll notice, when it's a shift candle, they don't come back up here because if they do, they allow losing traders that they have trapped up high. Look at the trapped volume. One push, two push, three pushes of, of traders chasing longs that are all now trapped with one candle. That is a shift candle. Mar traders position themselves in the market. If they did not take this trade, okay, they might have gone to break even down here. It's pulled back, but we get the inside bar the first candle outside of our 12 candle window back in line with the original trade for a re-entry for that continuation of the short trade. Now, again, it's a one bar stop. So again, just start thinking 12 candles first hour. We're in a, we're now in a downtrend. So this first hour, what are we thinking? If we're in a trending market, I'm looking for a one, two, three. Okay, and the pound Aussie actually gave us a textbook perfect one. This was a one, two, three at the New York Open, but they gave us the bear candle. It's the same thing. We're at round numbers. One, two, three, stop hunting into the trend. They've extended the range and gone one, two, three at the market open. A one bar stop up high with the thesis being this is going to continue for a measured move down through the lows, trapping traders or stopping out traders who have gotten in in the pre-market chasing the reversal of this market back up. So hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders. We're going to do one more here. Yesterday's, we'll look at yesterday's market. Again, market in the first hour breaks out of the highs and lows, breaks higher. One push pulls back, two pushes. London opens, comes back one, two, sideways, three, pins the candles who are long in Europe and then bursts back inside of the original breakout, breakout pullback, shift candle, 
in that third window. Again, even when you get the trade right, even when you're in the right direction, the market will come back to put heat on you. So traders either hold on to this, they fight for a better fill uh, on the limit order down in this next candle, or they just put their one bar stop in with a 50 pip target back to the swing high. The stops were up here from the U.S. session. Again, we'll move this over. You can see this the highs from the U.S. session. These are things you have to decide what your risk tolerance are. You could have gotten in on the break of the pin hammer at the end of the hour, at the second of the London hour. If it broke the high, you're in with a one bar stop. Or you can continue to follow this trade at the end of the third hour with a one bar stop. Again, with the thesis being this is a stop hunt. It is going to be aggressive and fast, and they're going to go right through and get the US session stops. So, again, traders, the hourly phenomena, 12 candle window, engulfments, pin hammers, the three things that markets do, they break out, they pull back, they continue, they break out, they reverse, and they go to the other side or they break out, pull back, and go into a trading range. And again, we can see this in the 12 candle window in the US session. Stop hunt in the first hour, consolidation, New York open takes traders lower, engulfment in the third hour in our 12 candle window for a 50 pip stop hunt back to the highs of the day. Stay disciplined, stay focused, 12 candle window, master your trading process, and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.